so heart is divided into four chambers left auricle right auricle right ventricle left ventricle these are the four chambers of the heart and the flow of blood oxygen rich blood from the lungs reaches the left atrium or the left auricle and then it goes into the left ventricle and then it transports to all parts of the body then deoxygenated blood reaches the right auricle from the right auricle it goes into the right ventricle and then goes into the lungs for oxygenation so that is how the flow of blood occurs in the heart and heart is located in the chest cavity so heart is divided into four chambers and there are also many arteries and veins which supply blood to the heart so next is oxygen enters the blood in the lungs so as we read the blood is filled with oxygen and is entering the lungs when we inhale we take in oxygen and this oxygen mixes with the blood in the lungs and becomes oxygenated blood so the separation of right and left side prevents the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so the heart is separated into both left sides and right side right and separated into chambers so this separation of right and left side it prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so this separation is highly efficient for the supply of oxygen to the body so the oxygenated blood which is rich in oxygen supplies lots of oxygen to the body so again this feature is useful in the animals that have high energy needs so if we have high energy needs we need more oxygen so this phenomena the separation of the chambers of the heart to prevent the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is very much useful in animals which have high energy needs that means if there is no physical activity in those animals they need more of oxygen their tissues ask for more of oxygen this occurs in birds and mammals so energy here is used to maintain the body temperature so for their high energy needs they need more of oxygen and thereby they need more of oxygenated blood so the energy they is used to maintain the body temperature of these animals birds as well as the mammals but in some animals other than these the heart is only three chambered for example amphibians and reptiles here there is no specific walls or chambers to prevent the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mixing so here the body allows the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood because the body needs are not much high and there is no not much need to maintain the body temperature like that in mammals and birds so amphibians and reptiles have three chambered heart they tolerate the mixing of the blood next moving on to fish fish has only two chambers heart so whenever fish takes water to the takes water through the mouth the oxygen rich water enters and goes out via the gills so in this process of mouth to gills the blood absorbs the dissolved oxygen from the water so fish has two chambered heart the blood is pumped to the gills so in the process of taking in water from the mouth to the gills the oxygen is absorbed by the blood and oxygenated there so blood is pumped to the gills and oxygenated there by the time the blood reaches the gills it oxygen rich blood goes is taken up by the fish body in the process of respiration of the fish fish take open their mouth take in water and send it out via the gills so in this process in this one cycle only the oxygen is absorbed by the blood and then the dissolved oxygen is taken from the water in the water the water is the oxygen is present in a dissolved form so fish has two chambers heart and then the blood is pumped to the gills so in this process of respiration the blood is pumped to the gills and only oxygenated there itself in the gills only it is oxygenated it is not pumped to any other organs because fish doesn't have any much specialized organs so the process of oxygenation of blood occurs in the gills of the fish only blood goes only once through the heart and this during one cycle of passage so fish has only two chamber heart that is the reason it has only one cycle of passage from the mouth to the gills there is only one cycle of that respiration so that is one cycle of that process of taking in of air and then leaving it out so there is 
one only one cycle of passage in the body one respiratory cycle or one cardiac cycle is only there in fish but there is something known as double circulation so what is double circulation in human beings there is four chamber heart and there is two types of blood here so in human heart blood passes through the heart twice in one cardiac cycle this is known as the double circulation so there is both oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood and both of these pass through the heart so there is in the heart the blood passes through the heart in the human heart blood passes through the heart twice so in one cardiac cycle one cardiac cycle to complete there must be passage of both oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood so this feature is known as double circulation because through the heart the blood is traveling twice in one cardiac cycle so whereas in fish the blood is traveling only once from the mouth to the gills so that is known as double circulation feature which is present only exclusively in the human beings who are having four chambered heart having two types of blood and the four chambers of the heart prevent the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood then what is the cardiac cycle one complete heart beat where all the chambers of the heart contract and relax is called the cardiac cycle all the chambers left right ventricles and auricles contract and relax in one cycle this is known as the cardiac cycle so in one cardiac cycle in the process of where all chambers of the heart relax and contract this is one cardiac cycle right so in one cardiac cycle 70 ml of blood is pumped in one time right so like that 49 ml 4900 ml of blood will be pumped in one minute right so what is the normal heart beat it is 72 beats per minute so one cardiac cycle pumps 70 ml of blood so in one minute for 4900 ml of blood will be pumped so that is what about cardiac cycle so then if we are talking about heart we see uh, many times people measuring blood pressure people talking that in our houses few people will be having high bp low bp so what is actually blood pressure and what is measured in blood pressure so blood pressure is a force that blood exerts against the walls of the vessels so blood when it is traveling in the blood vessels it exerts some pressure in that vessels so that is only known as the blood pressure in this blood pressure you have two measurements systole and diastole so systole is contraction of the cardiac muscle and diastole is relaxation of the cardiac muscle so if we say systolic pressure it means that the pressure of the blood inside the artery during ventricular systole so if i am saying systolic pressure it means the pressure of the blood inside arteries the pressure of the blood inside the arteries during ventricular systole systole is contraction of the cardiac muscle so during ventricular contraction of the cardiac muscle it is known as the systolic pressure then if i am talking about diastolic pressure what it means is pressure in the artery during ventricular diastole that is during contraction during relaxation of the cardiac muscle so diastolic pressure is pressure in the artery during ventricular diastole that is during relaxation so a normal bp is indicated by systolic pressure by diastolic pressure so a normal bp in the human beings is 120 by 80 mm of mercury so spigmo manometer is a device which measures the blood pressure right there is a hand cuff which should be tried and then the spigmo manometer has mercury readings which shows us the so hg here indicates the mercury levels hg is the chemical formula of mercury so 120 by 80 mm of mercury the mercury is present in the spigmo manometer which indicates the blood pressure level tubes or the blood vessels so our circulatory system is composed of heart blood vessels that is arteries and veins as well as the capillaries so first coming to arteries arteries are thick walled elastic blood vessels which carry oxygenated blood from the heart to different organs so they bring blood from the heart and then pump it to the different organs arteries are always indicated with red color pulmonary 
temporary arteries are exceptions because they carry deoxygenated blood. The primary function of arteries is to carry oxygenated blood. But pulmonary arteries are an exception because it carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs where the oxygenation of blood takes place. So the deoxygen from the deoxygenated blood, the oxygen will be put in there and the oxygenation process, oxygenation and oxygen will be added to the blood in the lungs. So pulmonary arteries are exceptions because they carry deoxygenated blood from heart to the lungs. In the lungs, oxygen will be added to the blood and becomes oxygenation of blood. So that is why oxygenation of blood takes place. So this is about arteries. Next is veins. Veins are thin walled vessels which carry the oxygenated blood from different organs to the heart. So veins carry deoxygenated blood which lacks oxygen from different parts of the body to the heart. But again pulmonary, pulmonary veins are exceptions because they carry oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart. So pulmonary veins are exceptions because they carry oxygenated blood from lungs to the the heart. Valves are present in the veins. So what does valves, valves ensure? Valves ensure the prevent, valves ensure that there is no backflow of the blood. So valves prevent the backflow of the blood. Valves are present in the veins. So this is about arteries and veins. The next thing in the circulatory system is capillaries. So the arteries, you know arteries are vessels like arteries divided into small small vessels which are known as capillaries. So these are blood vessels which have single cell walls. So the walls are very thin and single cell. So on reaching an organ or a tissue. So cells on reaching arteries on reaching an organ or a tissue. The arteries divided into smaller and smaller vessels. On reaching any organ or a tissue, arteries divide into smaller vessels. Smaller and smaller vessels. To bring the blood in contact with all the individual cells, they divide the arteries into smaller vessels because blood should get in contact with all the individual cells. So smaller vessels have very thin walls which are very one cell thick. So these smaller vessels have very thin walls, only one cell thickness and are called capillaries. So these are only called capillaries, they are one cell thick. Okay? They are also blood vessels which are formed from arteries. So exchange of material between the blood and the surroundings takes place across the thin walls. So exchange of material between the blood and the surroundings takes place in these capillaries. And these capillaries join together to form veins in future. So arteries become capillaries, capillaries become veins. Next is platelets. So whenever, suppose if there is any injury or any injury or any trauma, there will be leakage in the capillaries because all the ends are capillaries. So whenever capillaries are injured, they leak, that means there will be bleeding and lead to the loss of the pressure which re reduces the efficiency of pumping. So blood is actually a connective tissue, blood is always a connective tissue. It plays a role for the carrier of various substances in the body. So blood only transports various substances in the body, right? It transports food, it transports wastes, it transports water, etc. 
formed from the fluid which leaks from the blood capillaries. So if there is leakage of fluid from the blood capillaries, that fluid is known as the lymph. It leaks from the blood capillaries and goes into the intercellular spaces between the tissues. So the leakage leaked fluid from the capillaries goes and settles in the intercellular spaces of the tissues. That is known as the lymph. And this fluid is collected through lymph vessels. There are something called lymph nodes and lymph vessels which collect this fluid and finally return it to the blood capillaries. And finally it goes back to the blood capillaries. So lymph also plays an important role in the immunity. This is about the end of transportation life.